So, Tap G, ready to go for a spin? Uh, I guess if we have to. Which ones are we doing today? I was just about to spin the wheel. I'd hoped you would do the honors. Wow. There's enough spinning around here to give Sonic the Hedgehog vertigo. All right, here we go! Wheel of Morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us a lesson that we should learn. And our next item is... Triceratops spin at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Ugh. What? Last time we reviewed Magic Carpets of Aladdin, and remember what I said about another ride that reminded me of Eisner's Style Over Substance Reign? Oh, yeah. Yep. What Tap G is referring to is post-1994, when Michael Eisner's focus became fixated on marketing and marketability. Prime example, 2001's Chester and Hester's Dinorama. When Disney's Animal Kingdom opened in 1998, it was met with a better than average but still lukewarm review. Many people viewed it as a half-day park and not enough things for kids, similar complaints that befell California Adventure three years later. In response, it was decided to add a child-friendly area. After all, kids like dinosaurs, and the only dinosaur attraction was a thrilling, scary one, so... Enter Chester and Hester's Dinorama! The backstory for the land involves two gas station attendants, the eponymous Chester and Hester, who are overwhelmed when the Dino Institute moved in. They refused to sell the land and decided to open up a dinosaur-themed roadside tourist trap to cash in on the nearby institute. Hence, two carnival rides, the Wild Mouse-style coaster that is Primeval Whirl, and the spinner ride Triceratops Spin. Uh, I'm gonna go with Tacky for 500, Alex. It looks like a bright yellow spin top encircled by 12 grinning green Triceratops for people to ride in, plus several more on top who seem to love playing with beach balls. And need I mention that high-energy banjo twanging as the ride's music? It's so... so... cornbone! You'll keep saying that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. The safety spiel is alternately delivered by the owners, Chester and Hester, who sound more like cartoon hillbillies on loan from the Dallas McKinnon School of Elocution and Diction. Who's Dallas McKinnon? Voiceover actor? Voice of Gumby? Cincinnatus from Daniel Boone? Thunder Mountain? Oh. Ugh. Cause he sears the wildest ride in the wilderness! Oh, that guy! Wow, context, man. Context. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, like the others, it's your typical spinner, nothing fancy. It's just made to look unbearably corny, contrasting the hyper-realism of the Dino Institute next door. So, what are our thoughts? <laughs> eh. uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, this is, this is unabashedly like Dumbo, and it's not even sorry. No, not at all. So, what's the appeal here? I mean, really, what, what's the appeal? I, I can't even think of it. I mean, Chester and Hester's Dinorama as a whole is a big-lipped alligator moment. Big-lipped alligator moment. Would you mind explaining that to the folks who may not know what that term means? Okay, okay. It, it, it's a term that was coined by Lindsay Ellis and Doug Walker from Channel Awesome. It's derived from the movie All Dogs Go to Heaven, where a big-lipped alligator pops a bright in the middle of the movie and refers to any moment in any movie that follows these four criteria. A scene that comes out of nowhere, breaks the tone, is pointless in the narrative, and unmentioned afterward. You know, like the pink elephants from Dumbo. Huh. Chester and Hester's Dino-Rambo. Okay, when you walk to Chester and Hester's Dino-Rambo from any angle, it just smacks you in the face. There's no build-up to it. So, there's it comes out of nowhere. And when you leave, you're immediately back in the protect the environment and respect all creatures of nature that Animal Kingdom is all about. It breaks the tone so badly with the rest of the park. Like I said, all about the environment and suddenly wacky dinosaurs. And then, of course, it's pointless in the narrative. Animal Kingdom is all about respecting nature and respecting dinosaurs, if even if though they're dead. Here, it's cartoony dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, it is the physical personification of Big Lipped Alligator moment, and Triceratops Spin just makes it all worse because it's Disney. Yeah, it's a ride that it feels like Disney, but, you know, anybody could have put it together. Right. Um, I think the only real benefit to having this ride is if you only get one day at the parks, for some reason you choose Disney's Animal Kingdom, mm -hmm. although there are a lot of good reasons to choose into Disney's Animal Kingdom, this is not one of them. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, if the kids have to have something to do, and you're tired of running around the Boneyard all day... Or the Rafiki's Planet Watch, the affection section... Yeah, if you somehow manage to wear out on those other 
more superior rides, then I guess you could do this, maybe? Um, the music is atrocious. I, I like country music, but I can't stand bluegrass banjo twanging. I can't stand the hosts and their overdone accents. That's almost an insult to the accent itself. Ultimately, I have to give this a 1.5 out of 5. It's pathetic, it's unoriginal, it's dismal, but it's at least harmless. It's not like Primeval World, which actually hurts me when I get off. Yeah, we've we've spoken at length about Primeval World and the harm that it does to your body. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I think this is, it is harmless at its very worst. Um, and I kind of like dinosaurs. I was that kid who had all the dinosaur books and things like that. So I can see, for me, it has its place. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if you have an entire park full of much more superior attractions... This is definitely along the lines of last choice, maybe just before you leave. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 2 out of 5. So that's a 1.5 out of 5 from Tap G and a 2 out of 5 from Surfer Clock. And just like the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, you are required to at least transfer from a scooter to a wheelchair before boarding. Each dinosaur seats two. Can we recommend it? Uh, no. no. Animal Kingdom already has a bunch of rides, as I mentioned before. Dinosaur... Everest, Kilimanjaro Safaris, Festival of the Lion King, these attractions are unique to the park, and your time could be better spent just about anywhere else but here. Why bother visiting a ride that's a knockoff of three other Magic Kingdom rides? Especially if it has nothing special to offer. You know, except bluegrass music. If you need something for the kids, Lion King, Finding Nemo the Musical, Kilimanjaro, Flights of Wonder, Maharaja Jungle Trek, Rafiki's Planet Watch, there are lots of great diversions at Animal Kingdom. You shouldn't have to rely on a Dumbo knockoff to keep the tykes entertained. I'd say do it, but only as a last resort. All right. That finishes up Disney World. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I couldn't handle another. Now there are just two more spinners at Universal Studios. Ah, Smo. Oh, this is just getting stupid. Was Dumbo really such a gold mine that it had to be replicated this many times? Apparently so. Lack of originality. Because if Hollywood's proven anything, it's that lazy repetition is A-OK. -okay. <sighs> you know what else I hate about Hollywood? What's that? How they pretend that they're broke for ideas. There's 500 young enterprising writers serving cocktails in LA right now, and Hollywood bigwigs would rather adapt stories from places where they shouldn't stick their noses, like like the board game Battleship or Marshmallow Peeps or... or... Dr. Seuss? Yeah! I mean, what's the deal? What's next? Will Tim Burton direct a remake of Halloween Night is Grinch Night after Dumbo? And now I won't be able to sleep for a month now. Thanks. Uh, by the way, it looks like our next spinner review will be One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. The review wound down. Its ending was neater. Will you shut up? We don't need your dumb rhyme meter! Now, now, now say what you will, but like Thidwick the Moose, we must assist others into the land of Soy. Okay, no rhyming. <clears throat> Based on the 1960 book In Name Only, one fish opened at Islands of Adventure in Seuss Landing the same day the park opened. In the book, two kids circumnavigate the world to show off their weird and bizarre creatures that they find. Whoa! Weird creatures in a Dr. Seuss book? Plot twist! Much like Magic Carpets of Aladdin, it's not all just spitting and flying and flying and spinning. You also have to dodge the streams of water. How? Well, as is typical of the Master of Rhyme, the instructions lyrically inform you whether to rise or lower your fish to avoid getting wet. Or get wet, if that's your thing. Of course, I've gotten to be such an expert at these things that I've never gotten wet. What, never? No, never. What, never? No, never. What, never? Ugh. <sighs> well, hardly ever. <laughs> oh, so, is a uh, spin in your future? It might surprise you to know that I am going to say yes. Really do tell. Yeah, well, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is a very, I want to say it's a competent ride. It's very whimsical, and it totally belongs to the area that it's in. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, this is a pretty fun ride. I have, I, I have one major gripe about this attraction, however small it may be. Okay. The first time I went to uh, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, I came in directly from Port of Entry, you know, past McGillicott's Pool and Cat in the Hat, and there's this wide gap that seems to allow entry. There's a small sign that even in indicates that this is the Express Pass entrance, but on the whole, it feels like a big open free flow area at kind of, than a ride entrance near all oh, the stories you'll hear. Um, the entrance is clearly visible uh, from the other side, 
as if you're coming from a trolley train ride or a lost continent. Ride signage, wait time, instructions, everything is there. But on the other side, there's nothing. And I actually walked in on the wrong side. But be, even though there was nothing indicating that this was the wrong way. Um, am I saying that there needs to be a, be a big wrong way sign? Well, no, of course not. But at the very least, um, a Seuss theme, themed sign pointing in the right direction or, or a half wall, something. You know, that is pretty curious. And another thing that I've actually noticed about the entrance to this ride, unlike almost every other ride, not just here, but also over at Disney, mm -hmm. um, usually ride entrances have greeters at them. Yeah. Occasionally they're there for this ride, but most of the time when it's not, say, peak season... There isn't a greeter at the entrance to tell you, hey, go this way and you'll be able to get in. I wonder why that is. I'm not really sure. Maybe they're trying to encourage you to go, oh, hey, look, there's, uh, oh, the stories you'll hear. We can see that after we get off this ride. But other than that, it is a little confusing to try and get in, so. At least give Dumbo some credit. Yeah, there's a there's the sign, Dumbo the Flying Elephant. There's a big, wide open entranceway, and that's the exit. But at least you can only enter in from that one side and then see, oh, Fast Pass and standby it's not like there's a hidden entrance on the other side that you have to make the concerted effort to go around yeah this i don't know maybe it's the susian architecture oh try to find the entrance oh, oh. i don't know the, um, the long lost dr seuss book after daisy had Maisie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good one actually um but let's talk a little bit about the ride itself okay first things first hands down probably my favorite part about it i mean other than getting wet on a hot summer's day, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the narrator of the ride, the, the lady who sings throughout the whole thing, mm -hmm. I adore her voice so much. Really? Um, unlike certain other rides that we'll get around to reviewing later, <clears throat> High in the Sky Shoes Charlie Train Ride, where it's a kiddie ride, you know it's a kiddie ride because the guy's being super condescending. This isn't like that. Mm -hmm. She actually, she has a gravitas to her voice. You don't feel like you're being talked down to. You feel like you're being pulled in and made to be part of the fun. She's not She's not like uh, Casey from Disney Junior Live on stage. This sounds more like, um, oh gosh, what's what's a good metaphor? Almost, I want to say almost like a Sarah Silverman type woman. Someone who's up there in years and has, um... She has experience. Yeah, there you go. It's, you know, you can kind of tell she's done this kind of thing before. It's very Nick Jr. in that sense. Okay, all right, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, so Nick and Jr. And I don't mean that in a bad way at no, all. No, 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 no. I mean, there are shows that do that well, and there are shows that do that very, very poorly. Trolley train ride. Oh, excuse me. Again, man, getting a cold. <laughs> but in any case, yes, I love this narrator's voice. I will, I will actually, that's one of the things that actually makes me want to ride it, you know, once or twice a trip and this is one of the few rides that where being a simple spinner ride with a lot of a lot of bright colors is beneficial to its area aladdin doesn't need it astro orbiter doesn't need it triceratops spin doesn't need it but thank goodness that it's dr seuss in which you can have that kind of very simple very seussian styled ride with all these bright colors and it works and the streams of water that works with the whole thing of fish it, it it balances out very well yeah this it's not just for no reason like the spinning camels right but yeah i feel like as far as the spinner rides go to me this is actually probably my favorite one i do apologize dumbo mm -hmm. but to me this is my favorite one it actually you know Dumbo does very accurately capture the feeling of, you know, when elephants fly in that circus atmosphere. Right, right. Especially with all those recent redos. Yeah, we, we reviewed that attraction already. Yeah. But this, I mean, this really stands up on its own. It hasn't needed major refurbishment. Right, right. Sure, it's been down a little bit, you know, to replace some of the vehicles and all that. But, I mean, this stands up. It's not, like, you don't have to replace it. You don't have... I mean, yeah, maybe they could make the queue line a little bit easier to get to. <laughs> sure. But, I mean, this feels like it could stand the test of time, much like Dr. Seuss's work has. Nice. And that, to me, that ties it all in brilliantly. I'm going to have to go with a 2.5 out of 5. I believe I gave Dumbo a 3. Mm-hmm. Um, with um, um, this ride, I have to give it a 3 out of 5 myself. Nice. And I have to agree with you. It's probably the best out of all the spinners next to Dumbo. Uh, it, it works for the area. And aside from that one architectural thing... I'm I'm very cool with it being there, and I like the theming. So, yeah, 3 out of 5. All right, so that's a 2.5 out of 5 from Surfer Clock and a 3 out of 5 from Tap G. 
One fish is not recommended for anyone who has had recent surgery, suffers from motion sickness, or other conditions that could be aggravated by this kind of ride. Service animals are permitted. Wheelchairs are also permitted, but those in scooters will need to transfer. As per universal requirements, you must be able to grasp the lap bar with at least one upper extremity. You must be able to remain upright and your legs must be able to extend all the way to the edge of the seat and below the knee. Infants must remain upright and no I'm sorry, lap sitting is not permitted. And speaking of children under 48 inches or 121 centimeters, they must be accompanied by someone 14 years old or older and meets all other ride requirements. And remember, as if we haven't said it enough already, you will get wet. I don't like it, Sam I am. Would you, could you, make a wish? Would you, could you, with a fish? Not on, not on a fish, not with a wish. Not in a box, not with a fox. Not in a house, not with a mouse. Not here nor there, I won't get wet anywhere. I don't like getting wet, I really don't care. I don't like it on my clothes, I don't like it in my hair. Oh, come on! <laughs> Is it recommended? Well, unlike Disney, there's not a whole slew of spinners at Universal. So it's at least it's somewhat of a unique choice at I of A. And the only other spinner that has a squirting water feature is Aladdin, the Magic Carpets of Aladdin over at Magic Kingdom. So there's that. Bottom line, if you're loose with the Seuss, have a good time. Otherwise, it's kind of hidden in just a simple spinner. Nothing more. Oh! <laughs> okay, that's it. I can't do this anymore. <sighs> Surfs, we need to spend some time away from the theme parks. I say we go on a vacation. Way ahead of you, buddy. Uh, Reese, could you hand me that green folder over there? Vacation, huh? You guys finally gonna take that honeymoon to promise to take yourselves on once the thrill of the wedding and your first year of marriage was wearing thin in the state of Florida made it legal? Did you just make a gay joke? Because that is so 2003 and extremely inappropriate. Uh, in any case, uh, here's a nice little town I found. A quiet atmosphere, colorful locals, and it's home to one of the world's largest unstable nuclear facility in this hemisphere. Fine, fine, anywhere. As long as I don't have to deal with that brat sloshing water on me. Dude, I don't even need baggage. Let's go, like, right, like, right now. Reese, play us out. It's a guy love between two guys. Not cool, Reese! One hour later. Do you want to build a snowman? Oh! You are never allowed near the Starship's DVD player again. Well, you think they're gonna answer if they know it's us? Hey, what's this? They actually put a note on the door. I don't think anyone's done that since the 80s. Gone to Springfield. Huh. If I'm not mistaken, that means they're in any one of 16 U.S. states. Illinois, Massachusetts, Vermont. Or, they're not in any state at all. I don't follow. Here, come with me.